I'll speak next. I am, I'm going to be talking about MOOCs and how North Van District is using MOOCs, so multi, sorry, massive open online courses. Um, we've been doing programming around MOOCs for about two years. When we originally were looking at it, we, we were looking at offering programming, programming around video courses. We kind of been looking at Gill courses, which Tammy is going to be talking about next. Um, but MOOCs work really well for us. Um, we have discussion groups that have been really felt really full formed. We've done two of them. We did a year long program on from MIT using edX that was Introduction to Philosophy, and we're just in the midst of a second one that is. It was supposed to take a break in the summer, and the participants have decided that they want to continue. So, madly rushing around to get PR to let them let other people know that. Um, and it's ancient Chinese thought meets modern thinking. Um, it's been a really, really popular program. Um, it's a registered course. We've got 25 participants who can register each year. About 15 to 20 of them show up on a regular basis, which our librarian says is a nice discussion group. We sort of get um, people showing up. Um, it's the, our, our program that, that runs for our MOOC program is two hours a week. So, and the format within that out, within those two hours are, they show a 15 to 20 minute lecture and then participants discuss the lecture and they talk about what they've just heard and learned. And then there's a, a quiz that can be taken as you're moving on. So they collectively work together to answer the quiz. And then they move on to the next lecture. So in any given two hour session, they usually go through about three lectures each week um, and lots of discussion. The librarian at our MOOC program is primarily there as a facilitator facilitator and a moderator. So the librarian is not the expert, they're just helping to coordinate, make sure that people have got time, um, everybody has time to say things. The librarian often says very little. We've had a bit of staffing changes that, that have happened and, and we have a librarian sort of jump into the program about halfway through and has continued on and, and she said she felt really comfortable doing that right from the very beginning. Um, a challenge that she mentioned sometimes can be managing the personalities. We've got lots of um, educated minds with differing opinions, but um, apparently they, they, they're good and they know when they've gone too far. They, <laughs> they know each other and they, they sort of work, they, they've worked to, out how to work with each other. And it's whoever wants to join at the beginning of each course. They're in the process of selecting the other course. There, so just in terms of selecting the MOOCs, there are two types of MOOCs. There's the current ones that are running, uh, which have the benefit of a, a forum so that you can actually talk to the professor who's running it. And there are also archived courses, which are courses that have previously run and you have access to the entire course material at once. Um, a benefit to, so, that, so when, when they were going through the top five, they, they basically, Everybody went away and said, let's look at what we want. They came back and they're having discussions within their group of um, what courses are we interested in. So the current top pick is what is mind. They think that will elicit a lot of discussion. Um, the, and the second pick is economic democracy. Um, as they're looking, they're looking for topics that are not task-based or skill-based or even necessarily information-based. They're looking for courses that are going to elicit an interesting discussion. So there was one of the courses that looked particularly interesting to a lot of people was the history of classical music. And people were fascinated by that and they thought this would be great, but it's not good. We're not going to talk about it that much. So it was written off as one of the potential ones for a MOOC program. But a number of people have decided that they're going to independently do the MOOC. So again, it sort of is promoting the library's purpose of promoting lifelong learning because people are learning about these courses and doing them independently. So one of, one of the challenges with the current one that they're looking at is what is MIND. They think it would be really interesting, but it's a live course. It's going to be starting on August 27th. And our librarian has been having difficulty trying to figure out what does that mean if it's a live course. It was previously a course, it was archived. Um, so the benefit is they'll have access to the discussion, but will they only have one lecture a week because they're wanting to go through multiple courses. So um, she's recommending just for the ease of use, um, look for archived courses. Archived courses, you have all of the course content. You don't get the, the um, current, uh, or. You don't get to chat within the forum with the lecturer, 
Although apparently they do write letters of thanks to the professors to say thank you for your course, even though they weren't actually interacting with them just to, to let them know what was going on. And I think I think that's pretty much everything. It's been it's been a really successful program. Um, with they, it's a couple of thing, programs that have come up as well uh, that are similar. So it's not a MOOC, but I'm going to just promote us anyways. And also because it's an interesting idea. Um, one of the people who was a community member who was part of the, of the MOOC discussion um, has now created a talking TED Talks talk. So he basically just decide it's a one hour a week. He selects the, the main topic for the week and the main video, and that's shared and publicly available so people know what they're going to. And people go and they watch the TED Talk, and then they talk about the TED Talk. And so it's very similar to the MOOC program of just let's watch and talk and what topics are, are being generated. Um, and then if there's time for another watch and talk, they sort of just look at the, if you like this, you might like that, and just collectively decide what to watch next. Um, so they're very, it's, it's a way to have programming around MOOCs, around these educational courses in a way that is licensed and we're allowed to do it without having to pay money, which is fabulous. Um, there, one of our librarian who does this has thought that it would be interesting to do a course with Lynda, but lynda.com doesn't have, we don't have access to the course material based on the licensing. But if we could get licensing to, for a course or a particular series of courses, she had the idea of using the Lynda program and saying like, okay, we're going to get, get do a bunch of photography courses and we'll have photographers come and we'll watch a couple of videos, we'll talk about it. We'll go home, we'll all do our photography and figure out what we learn. We'll come back the next week, share what we learned, what worked, share our photos, talk. Let's watch the next one. So I think as Jennifer was talking with the book club, there is scope for possibility with doing um, programming with Linda if it were allowed. And until it is allowed, MOOCs are fabulous. <laughs> <laughs>